Okay. I think the first thing we need to understand is most of the time those conditions are safe. They don't have a suspensive clause. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of the suspensive clause is for excuse the buyers. Excuse, excuse, excuse. What, what's a suspensive clause? Because I always want to make sure that. <laughs> A suspensive clause is a clause that is for the benefit of the person purchasing the property. So in terms of that suspensive clause, it says, I'm buying this property depending on whether my bond will be granted. So meaning if the bond is not granted, then there's no contract. It lapses automatically. That's the purpose of the suspensive clause. So that is why a lot of property investors, they have got a number of suspensive clauses where they call them exit clauses because they know that should that not happen, then they are out of automatically. So those conditions of sale, they don't have those mm -hmm. suspensive clauses. So meaning, now you will have a situation where you already signed it, you already paid the commission, you already paid the deposit, and now you obviously cannot obtain a bond for the balance. Then what happens, because one, there, there are two options that I'm gonna talk about, the sheriff as well as the private auctions. On the private auctions, obviously there's a breach clause there because you are then in breach because you're not bringing up the guarantee in terms of their balance. Then the seller of that property on a private auction, they will then send you face the letter of demand, informing you that you are out of your time and then you need to obviously try and uh, rectify that. But you do not rectify that, they have like options in terms of the conditions of sale. So that is why again it's important for you to be an observer first. Be an observer, go and attend a number of auctions. And then when you attend those number of auctions, at least you know. And again, please, you must arrive early. Arrive early so that when they reach the conditions, you understand what is it that they are talking about. There's a very exciting close day, again, in those conditions of say, where it says, you have been given an opportunity to read, and you understand. Well, I suspect. Um... When we were speaking with Sis Luanda today, we spoke about your other, your, other, your other contracts, maybe saying that you have a lease agreement of 10 years. Now, to me, 10 years is a long time to have a lease agreement. Does it get revised through time, or is it just that standard lease agreement? Because I can understand that if you signed something that was wrong from the get-go, and they didn't say anything about increments on an annual basis or anything like that, and you agreed to that, you are bounded for 10 years. Is it revised through time or does it stay standard for the next 10 years? When it comes to these agreements, um, there is a 10 year list in which is registered against the, the property. The, the long term leases that are registered against the property. Obviously, you have to make sure, because I think what I would want to emphasize is do not always do your own DIY, make sure that you, you consult. So now when it comes to also residential, right, if you're bringing it back home, if I have a property right now and I don't have a lease agreement set in place, is there a default rules that happen when someone is actually uh, renting in my property or is it just no rules? You know, there are lease agreements are there and they're being regarded as valid. But then the thing is, when there's a deposit in place, the tenant is not going to come back to you and say, hey, why didn't you invest my deposit? <laughs> because it's a thing you would say, yeah, I said, when I said. Mm -hmm. So a verbal lease, yes, is valid because people, they do things like this. Because you are in a hurry at the time. No, that's like six months is fine. And then obviously you still need to prove some other things. Remember, when there's a contract, you have to cater for now and future. Because if it happens, you would imagine actually, that is now from January to June. Should something happen from and then and then what happens? You know? So it's important because again, if someone defaults, you need to know how long do you have to face that person in default. So you must have a key routine which you have to send a letter whereby you are notifying your tenant with the good, you are in default, I'm opposing you, how many days? So now it's going to be thinking you can't afford to meet 30 days. I mean you can't it's not a thing anyway. And the tenant is gonna be like, no, 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 30 days is fine for me. So the person that wins is the person that has the best lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is true. 